bring to me my girl so sweet like a bee that's found his flower i love her from her head to her feet by the week by the day or the hour whack my doody do whack my doody doody whack my doody do yes she is my beauty <laughs> It is hot. Oh, I'll take 20, please. Well, that's how it was. I bet Jim his old motorbike wouldn't do more than 45 going up the hill with me on the back. And do you know what? She did 50. That's all I owe him, Lee. Well, you wouldn't catch me. <laughs> well, then, Sally, my dear, when are you going to get spliced? Oh, ask me another. Well, if and when you do get it, stop. How would you like to live in Tudor Cottage? How would she like to live in Buckingham Palace? Don't you listen to him, Sally, love you up a gum tree. <laughs> if I was a magician, you know what I'd do? I'd make all the old gals living by themselves, fall in love with all the old boys living by themselves, get them itched up and make them live in one house instead of two, and then I'd have plenty of houses for Sally and company. Oh, no. You talk such rubbish. Major Reynolds and Widow Mulvaney, for oh, example. That Widow Mulvaney, she gets me all steamed up. Uh, she used to get me all steamed up and all once upon a time, but not in the way you mean. I had my eye on her, you know. Oh, you've got eyes in the back of your head where Widows is concerned. Oh, Widow Mulvaney, will you be my Janie? Down in the meadow, two heads on one pillar. What could be nicer? Oh, <laughs> there he goes, ready for the loony bin. <laughs> all right, Mr. Magician, you let me know when you've got it all fixed up. I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> all right. Oh, chalk it up, would you? Oh, bring Toodaloo, to then. me, my girl, so sweet. Mm -hmm. Like a boy that's That home. idea, that is. People don't get married just because you put an idea into their head. Me and Mother Nature, my dear. Invincilarious alloys. Ah, but the widow and the major quarrel when they aren't married. What would they be like, honest up? When a couple fights, that means they're getting ready to go into a clinch, don't oh. it? Long comes old Cupid, he takes a dart out of his hip pocket, he lays it on his bowstring and... <coughs> you've had it. It was all up with you, my sweetheart, when I shot my arrow, wasn't it? Yes, and oh. it's been all over ever since. Hello, here comes the Mad Major. Oh, well, I'll go and get the tea. Ah, <laughs> oh, fine mess you made of the home, home of the civil defense exercise last night. I was a little bit of, that was a little bit of realism, Major. Realism, rubbish. You were supposed to take charge of the incident at Four Lane End. And where was your party? Well, we decided to imagine the old village had been evacuated, you see, and we was all going away to Wales. Mm, for Wales, read the wild duck, I suppose. <laughs> and in any case, how could this happen without me, the commander, knowing about it? Oh, just like it doing wartime, top secret. Mm, you made the whole thing ridiculous. And another thing, uh, were you in uniform? Well, I don't believe in that. No sooner did you get yourself in uniform than the enemy recognises you and they start to blazing away at you. Are you running this show or am I? I'm a Guinea dictatorship, sir. Well, what do you think we are, a rabble? Well, I've been thinking things over lately, like sir, and I've got an idea that we ought to make one or two little changes. Fiddlesticks. Have you got my tobacco? Now, I think every man doing the civil defence, he ought to have a free issue of tobacco every week. Now, we start on you. You'll put it down to my account. Now, or send the bill to the government. That'll be the start. Rubbish, I say. To be a volunteer is a privilege. We don't want any reward. Ah, all the same. A nice drop of free beer wouldn't come down too bad, would it? Why couldn't we have our headquarters round here at the Royal Duck? All right, the government about that and all. You write to the government and by heaven I'll court-martial you. Oh, a bit of discipline, that's what you want. Ah, uh, I got an advantage over you there, Major. Oh? I got a wife. That does a man more good than all the court marshals, you know. I don't know you're doing any good to. Ah, <laughs> you know, nice drop of massage. Here. Nice drop of massage, that goes down a wife. How's your rheumatics? Oh, they're not too good. Ah, oh, well, nice drop of massage, best thing in the world. And that's where a wife comes in handy, Major. Well, well, what do you mean? Why should, why should I marry a woman uh, to be a sort of groom? Oh, uh, bless my soul. Here, I know what I was going to say to you. Did you ever have one of the Widow Mulvaney's apple pies? Uh, no, uh, why should I? Ah. Not for sale, are they? Finest apple pies ever made in existence, they are. Oh, smashing apple pies. Made in one of these flat dishes, you know, running out, running over the side there. Well, I'm not starving, man. Slice of one of them. 
And a bit of stout and a nice glass of stout. Oh, heaven on earth, my dear. Yeah, as I say, I'm not starving. <laughs> you know, she was only talking to me about you the other day. She was asking me if I could tell her someone as could advise her about her investments. I says, Major Reynolds, I says. Good job. I says, Major Reynolds is your man for that. I says, he's a financial wizard, I says. Oh, just as I thought, she says. Just as I thought. If there's one man in this village I do admire, she says, tis Major Reynolds. Oh, that's very curious. Do you know they had a terrible row a few days ago? Oh. Uh, when my pigs, uh, you know, broke into her garden, you know, wallowing about. You know what pigs are? Oh. And do you know what she called me? No. She called me a great gorilla. A go well, you see, she meant a guerrilla leader, you see. A, a, a fighter, fighting man, a man of war, she meant. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, I didn't see it like that. Yes, I was a kind of guerrilla at one time. Yes, I suppose I could give her some good advice about buying property. But I have no intention of doing so. Huh. Before I knew where I was, she'd had me building a greenhouse for one that my pigs didn't damage. She's a terrible woman. Ah, and she says you're a... Terrible man, <laughs> meaning you're a wonder, you see. If ever two people was made for one another. Well, well I don't mind telling you that uh, I think she's a woman in a hundred. Um, uh, however, well, that's my affair. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Chatterway. Good morning, Mary Jones. And uh, don't forget, Friday night and in uniform. I beg your pardon. I've got myself a new pair of spurs. Oh, have you? Well, I just have a look at them sometime. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Chatterway. And how are you today? Very well indeed, thank you, Mrs. Titlock. Oh, I, I didn't say good morning yet. <laughs> I say, that old tawny owl wasn't half a going it across your way the other night. Did you hear him? Yes, quite kept me company. <laughs> ah, I bet he did. Uh, no letter, I suppose. No, not yet, Mr. Chatterway. It'll be coming, Mr. Chatterway. Well, I hope you don't mind my having them sent here. If it's a nuisance, I... No uh, nuisance at all, uh, Mr. Chatterway. It gives me an excuse to pop in. You know? <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's very kind of you. It really is. I, uh, you don't mind this later oh, on. Now, either. Mr. Chatterway, we've told you before, you're more than welcome to have any letters sent here. Thank any you. time at all. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, poor old soul. Well, somebody writes to him pretty regular, isn't it? His old missus, isn't it? Well, she's been dead long since. Ah, uh, so they say. What do you mean? Well, oh, nothing. Here, will you be all right by yourself for a little while? Well, what do you think I'll do? Drop down dead? <laughs> now then, heads I goes to the wild duck, and tails I goes to the widow Mulvaney's. Heads. Well, I think I'll go to the widow Mulvaney's. like the rising sun. Oh, more like a rose in the first flush of dawn your faces, Mrs. Bob Ah, uh -huh, blarney, blarney. <laughs> well, now, what did you say you'd come for? I'm an ambassador. A what? From the Major. Oh, and what can he be sending an ambassador to me for, I'd like to know? Can't he speak for himself? He's a misunderstood man. Yes, no wonder. Uh, he's a warm-hearted man. Yes, sir? A kindly man. Oh! 
A shrinking man. Yes, he should shrink a lot more. He's a peace-loving man, anxious to smooth things over. Then he'd better smooth over what his pigs did. Broke my glass, ruined my roses. How do you know they was his pigs? Does he deny they were his pigs? Well, he'd never go against anything used to. Ah, he's been going against me for years. Said the river was overfished. Could be better if it had a rest. And then I see him fishing as large as life. Well, that was only keeping the trout in training. So as they recognise a fly when they see one again, uh, you see. And didn't he tell me fortune at the village fair and predict I should marry an American airman? Well, a compliment that were. Only the best is good enough for export, you know. Mm. But... Didn't he sell me chickens that never laid an egg? Didn't he run into my car when he was outside the butcher and then say I was a bad driver? Well, he only trying to attract your attention, like. And even when I accompanied his singing at the village fair, didn't he say that I ruined his song? And him with a voice like a foghorn? And I told him so. All made for each other, these two. He gets a bit crotchety at times, mm. I know. Well, we all get a bit crotchety at times. You get a bit crotchety yourself, you know. Oh, I do, do I? Wow, when people is lonely, they do get a bit crotchety. Mm. And the Major is a very lonely man. Oh, rubbish. Spends half his time in the wild duck. But that's because he's so lonely. Mm. My heart goes out to him when I see him sitting there with his little drop of Irish whiskey. Irish? Oh, that's the only thing he'll touch Irish, you know. Mm. Yes, he sits there... Uh, drinking and a dreaming and sometimes you'll take a pencil out of his pocket and you just scribble something down on uh, a bit of paper names of horses i suppose oh no no he ain't a betting man no mm. he left one of these bits of paper behind him one time mm. and i picked it up how to diddle the income tax i bet no no it was a bit of poetry uh code for sending bets by telegram no 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 i've got it here mm. bit of poetry i'll copy a bit of it then it, your name's emily isn't it well, you know very well it's my name. Well, you listen to this thing. Who is the lady I adore? Who is that lovely she? The one I long for more and more. Her name begins with E. Then follows M and I and L. Then Y is plain to see. Oh, blessed be the day I fell in love with Emily. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What did you say? Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, ah, I thought you did. I don't believe a word of it, you know. She lives alone in Tudor Cot. How happy should I be if she would change her single lot and come and live with me? There you are, Luke. Um, her face is sweet, her form is neat, her smile is like the sky. In all the world, there's none can beat my lovely Evelyn. Lee, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, go on. I, I believe you wrote it yourself. Oh, what, me? Write that? No, that's not my style. Oh, no, dear. If, if I was to write a letter, if I was to write a bit of poetry to you, it'd go more like this. So, Emily, oh, Emily, why can't we have a family that roam my chair and roam my knee and every face that I did see, I still would see in my Emily. A little bit more on the rough side, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a dangerous man. <laughs> Oh, but I'm not having you put over anything on me, Nancy. Now tell me straight, what are you and the Major up to? Well, what does a lonely man think of when he's out there on his civil defence exercises in the dead vast and middle of the night and him planning his duties so that whatever may be tied, Tudor Cottage and its lovely owner shall never be outraged by the enemy. Titlark, he says to me, as we was a patrolling down that very road, he says, Titlark, my lad, he says, if there's one house I feel myself responsible for, he says, tis to the cottage, he says. I know it's very wrong of me, he says, to put one house in front of another or one person in front of another, he says. But I can't help it, Titlark, he says, and that's the solemn truth. Mm. And uh, what did you say to that? <laughs> well, I said... Um, if, of course, I says, that dread day should ever come, Major, I says, which heaven forfend, I says, isn't it likely, I says, that the good lady referred to will be dwelling elsewhere, I says. What do you mean elsewhere, he says, taking hold of my arm like a vice. I says, why, I says, up at your own house, I says, up at Yew Tree Farm. Well, then he starts a breathing hard, just like a little steam engine going uphill. Oh. 
he says, if that could only be, 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 if that could only be. I says, why shouldn't it be? I says, you're two lonely creatures, and what more natural? I says, two nests without a single egg in either one of them. Do you think nature intended that? I says. No, I guess. Oh, dear. Of all the lies. Well, and uh, what then? Well, then. Then I see him smiling to himself in the shadows, just like a man who's catched a nice fat salmon. <laughs> oh, so I'm a salmon now. Oh, may I deserve all I get if I get hooked again by any man. And him married a couple of times before. Oh, well, there's no disadvantagement in that, ma'am. You see, look, to be willing to stick out his neck a third time, well, that speaks well for him. Well, it speaks well for any man, doesn't it? Well, I suppose twice isn't as bad as Bluebeard or Henry VIII. That's <laughs> just what the Major himself said. His two minds have got a single... Oh, do you know what he said? He said she's as good as half a pint of champagne to me. Really? <laughs> Did he say that? Yes, he says it was fate, he says, what drove my pigs into her garden. He says, so as I could see her at her best, he says, with her dander up and her eyes are flashing, a fighting for her own, he says. <laughs> and I wasn't the only one. No, no. no. <laughs> no he said, I didn't think I was the queen of Ponga Ponga. <laughs> <laughs> I quite enjoyed it. Oh, if ever two people was made for one another. <laughs> but what are you getting out of all this, Natty Love? Uh, yes, you look very innocent sitting there. I'll be quite frank with you, ma'am. I seize myself bestowing this lovely cottage of yours upon as handsome a young couple as ever throwed their arms around each other's necks. Biggest bit of impudence I ever heard of. <laughs> And what do you expect me to say? Well, nothing, nothing for the moment, ma'am. If the Major should speak to you, and I think he will sooner or later, don't tell him I breathed a word. Uh, I promise not to when he unburdened uh, his heart to me, you see. Here, then. You're safer when you're not talking. Well, here's to the wedding bells, ma'am. And I only hope when the great day comes, you'll ask me to give you away. Not another word. Silent as the grave, ma'am. Silent as the grave. <laughs> <laughs> Very misunderstood woman is Mrs. Mulvaney. Oh, how's that? No, she's had a very tragic life, you know. Mm, never heard that before. She doesn't look tragic. Well, it's because she hides it, that's why. But she was disappointed in love for one thing, you know. Well, I thought her husband was, uh, you know, um... Mm, what, what, him? Yeah, the second string. Caught him on the rebound. No, a real sweetheart was an explorer, you know. He got lost in the wilds of New Guinea. Carnival country. You mean, uh, he was eaten? They stewed him. Of course, she never mentioned it. Well, how can she? Good heavens. Uh, she puts a brave front on it. Ah, in the daytime. But in the dead vast in the middle of the night, you think of her sitting there in that pokey little cottage all by herself. Well, no wonder she gets a bit crotchety at times. You get a bit crotchety yourself, don't you, Major? Oh, my dear Titlark, you mustn't let your imagination get the better of you. Well, I'd sooner live at the icy pole or digging like a blinded mole as have this farm and only me to hear me sing and brew my tea. Oh, misery, misery. Well, uh, living in this house alone, I do feel somewhat on my own. Good heavens, I'm getting it now. Of course you are, and why, sir? Because you wasn't born to be single. You've had two wives and you must have a third. And I'll tell you, she's only waiting to be asked. What are you saying? Just what are you saying? I'm saying she's only waiting for you to declare yourself, sir. Do you know what she said to me the other day? She says, when I see that lovely man, she says he's as good as half a pint of champagne to me at 11 o'clock in the morning. She, she said, said that? Yes, yeah, she said it was fate, she says, what drove his pigs into my garden. She says, so as I could see him at his best, she says, with his dander up and his eyes are flashing, a fighting for his own. And she said, when you and me was out patrolling the other night down the village street, and she heard your voice, she said her heart went boom, 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 boom. Did she hear it? Boom, 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 boom. Like a little steam engine. Just like a little steam engine going up, Phil, yes. Mind you, she said this to me all very confidential, you know. Oh, yes, of course, yes, yes. 
Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I says to her, Mrs. Mulvaney, I says, if the Major should by any chance speak to you about storming strong points, I says, it'll be your strong points he's talking about. Did you really? Yes, and uh, do you know what I also said to her? I said, and if he should talk to you about the advantages of a frontal attack, I says, it'll be your front he's talking about. Oh, 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 if ever a man oh, needed yeah. a wife to straighten him out, you do, sir. No, I'd rather have a chair at the moment, oh, if you don't mind. Like Joy's giving us a bit of massage, oh, too. Oh, they gets us where they want us, you know, help us. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, let's oh, have a look at oh, 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 it. Oh, 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 no, 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 you know a wife can't be forced to give evidence against her old man in a police court. Uh, oh, 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 oh! And another thing, if you've got a funny story and nobody else will laugh at it now, she will. She's got to. She can't help herself, you see. Yes, I don't feel very funny at the moment. Oh, oh, oh. oh. But a man without a wife is like a fork without a knife, sir. Oh, a strange sort of thing to say, but I, I suppose there's a certain amount of truth in it. <laughs> Don't you let on I breathe the word to you oh, about this, no. will you? Uh, make out it come to you by the light of night. Yes, right? of course, yes, very true, yes, uh, very true. Oh, what a lovely place you've got here. Oh, do you think so? Oh, I think it's a wonderful house. Good enough for the National Trust, is it? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Only short of two things. Oh, what are they? A wife and a nice big bottle of embrocation, and the remedy's in your own answer. Yes, it's just as well you're going, you rascal. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you might make me think there's something in what you say. <laughs> I'll come across the lane with you. It'll do me good. I yes. Emily. Emily. just about getting them all in. Oh, that's lovely. Now, don't keep me waiting. Are we getting on, that? Oh, me and old Mother Nature and little old Cupid, we aren't doing too bad. Oh, you don't mean you've really fixed it? No. You have patience, my dear. Well, don't you go leading Sally on. Cottages don't go on gooseberry bushes, you know. It'll be a miracle if they get one. All right, old Mrs. Cut and Dry. <laughs> well, you let me know, Nat, won't you? Le oh, I'll go scatty if we get that cottage. You leave it to your Uncle Nat, my dear. All right. There you are, Mr. Chatterway. Come with the second post. Thank you, thank you. Uh, may I have a, a small packet of the cheaper kind of cigarettes, please? But you don't smoke, do you? Uh, sometimes, when I get a letter... She writes to you pretty regular, don't she? Yes, 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 yes. yes. It's your daughter, is it? No, uh, no. Uh, I never had a daughter. Ah, I know. It's your sweetheart, isn't it? Oh, here, here, here. A voice said something. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. One gets a bit lonely sometimes, but it's quite all right. I know, I know. I, uh, I, I play a little game of make believe with these letters uh, did you know that well i have sometimes wondered my wife wrote them long ago before she passed on and i kept them i post one to myself now and then foolish i suppose oh no i don't see nothing yes. foolish about that mr chatterway would you, would you like to read it I'd like you to read it. Uh, read it. Uh, uh, I'd like to hear it. I sometimes think, my dearest, of the time when one of us will be left alone. Go, go. And oh, my darling, I hope it will not be me. 
or I shall never be able to bear it. But then I think how selfish that is, and I pray that it will be me who is left, so that I can prove by my steadfastness how deeply I loved you. Mm. For when you are away, I see you even more clearly than when you are near, and somehow I seem to love you more. You stand out like a tree against the sunset on a winter's day, and your face as though a light was shining on it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I heard what you were saying when I came in about that young couple wanting a, a cottage. Oh, I got me eye on one all right, Holmes. Uh, I could probably get into a home of some kind or a, a boarding house. I can see it's not right that I should be occupying a whole cottage. Oh, no, your place wouldn't do for him, Mr. Chatterway. Can't swing a cat round in your cottage, you know, it's too tiny. Mm. I'll put that right out of your mm. mind. Mm. Besides, what should we do with you without you in the village? Eh? <laughs> do you remember when you played your fiddle at the concert that time? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> you played that lovely. And do you remember that went down so well we yes. fetched you back and made you give an encore? Oh, yes. Do you remember? I bet you don't remember what you played the second time. No, what, 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 I remember. What, 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 what. The flight of the bumblebee. Ah, the yes. <laughs> 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 I'm going off my nut soon. Hello, here comes the love bird. Thank you. Now then, Tick Tock, explain yourself. What do, you, what, what, do you, what do you mean by it all? How oh, dare you, you old reprobate! Yeah, now, is this a deputation now? Yes, it is. Just what you mean, butting in with these cock and bull stories, this wheedling and waffling. Yes, how dare you say I sent messages, putting words into my mouth. Now, you both let me down. You oh, gave me what? your solemn promise to respect my confidence and not say a word. You oh, rascal, you! Didn't you say you enjoyed having a row with him? Well, I, I might have said something of the sort. But for you to make out that I was waiting to... Well, really, never before have I been so led up the garden. <laughs> and didn't you say she was a woman in a thousand and that you'd be only too happy to help her with her financial affairs now? Well, I may have said something like said. that. But I understand you represented yourself as my ambassador, practically making overtures. And that you were my go-between, <laughs> making out that I wanted to... Well, really, it's monstrous. I wonder how many people you spread these fairy tales to. All your customers, I suppose. And me thinking I was the instrument of providence. Well, I'm a disappointed man, and I humbly apologise. Yes. I'm glad to hear it. I'll, I'll put a nice big notice up in the shop window saying I was wrong. Right. Uh, a notice saying that you apologise for interfering in other people's affairs. No, saying I realise now that I was wrong because you're both too old to get well, married. What? You, you'd insult Mrs Mulvaney? Why, the majors and the prime of life. Oh, wrong again, am I? All right, then I shall say there's no possible truth in it because you don't get on well together. You're a lot too oh. quarrelsome. But we get on amazingly well. No one better. <laughs> Here, but didn't you say she was a terrible woman? You can't have it both ways, you know. And didn't you say she said to you you was an old gorilla? But good heavens, are none of my words sacred. Hey, and didn't you say that he spent too much of his time down in the wild duck and you'd be hanged if you saw yourself hitched up to any man again? You, you tricked me into it, you so scoundrel. Don't you believe a word he said? Like uh, no, you either, Emily. I said you were a very brave woman putting on such a brave front to the world. And I said, even if you had been married twice, it was nothing to old Bluebeard or Henry VIII. Yes, there you are, you uh, see. There you what, are. what did I say? Didn't I say you two was made for each other? She's just the right size for you, Major. <laughs> you know, if I was a young man again and single, I'd give you a run for your money, my <laughs> friend. She's in lovely condition, too. Oh, right. no, no, that, 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 that's quite enough of that. Oh, well, well, Emily, my dear. Uh, how about it? Shall we go through with it? Well, I had every intention, Herbert. Once we had a few kind words with him, the old will of the wisp. Uh, well, uh, there's just one thing 
I'm afraid I've got rather used to having my own way. Yes, you've had it far too long, Herbert. Oh, have I? Mm. If we are to marry, I'm afraid my house will not be big enough. Oh, but your house is far nicer than mine. I've long admired it. Oh, so it's my house you're marrying, not No, no, not at all. Well, you can't have it, and you can't live in it. No, but Emily, my dear. (laughs) Because I've promised it to a certain young couple, friends of this scoundrel here. Boy, that's me. Jim and me's got a cottage. Oh, I'll go scatty. Oh, Oh, Jim, we've got a cottage. Well, well, come along, my dear. Uh, You rascal, you. Oh, woman, woman, how can man escape thee? Well, there's the list of ladies, Admiral. Choose one for yourself. Eh? I said choose one for yourself. Oh, Mrs. Rogerson. That nice little craft moored down Wood Lane. You try her. Father shot across her bows. Of course so. Oh, Oh, yes. What are you up to now, Nat? What's this list with men down one side and women down the other? I'm setting up in rival... Oh, I was thinking she was deaf for the moment. Eh? (laughs) We're just joining some old bits of rope up together. A splicing job, eh, Admiral? Splicing the main brace, eh? That's right, splicing (laughs) Mrs. Rogerson's main brace for her. (laughs) Send the Navy. (laughs) Whack. Whack my doody do, whack my doody doody, whack my doody do, Jessie is my beauty. Oh, man's a rogue and a rascal's son, and woman be his undoing, but all the same, she's the only one can keep him from his ruin. Whack my doody do, whack my doody doody, whack my doody do. Jessie is my beauty. Whack my doody do, whack my doody doody, whack my doody do. Jessie is my beauty.